Praise the Lord. Coming to you from the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Centre for the ceremony to usher in the first session of Parliament for 2022 to 2027. It has been raining off and on for most of the morning. The showers have thankfully held up so far within the last half an hour. And it is turning out to be a beautiful day, one suited for such a special occasion. As you may recall, Parliament was dissolved on December 27th last year to allow for the January 19th general elections this year. As most of you may be aware, the historic Parliament buildings are undergoing extensive renovations. And since early 2020, sittings of Parliament have been held temporarily at the Worthing Corporate Centre in Worthing Christchurch. Now, in order for today's first meeting to be held here at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Centre, the President, Her Excellency, the Most Honourable Dame Sandra Mason, had to issue a proclamation allowing this facility to be used for such an occasion. Another proclamation will be issued for Parliament to be held at the Worthing Corporate Centre after today, and this is again until those renovations are completed on those Parliament buildings something the officials are hoping will be done in the first half of this year. Today's event is a safe zone event. Therefore, attendees and staff have either been fully vaccinated or have had to be tested on arrival here. The Senate chamber, where specially invited guests and parliamentarians will be seated, has a capacity of 320 and this is as a result of the COVID-19 restrictions allowing for adequate spacing between each guest. Well, just to let you know, a significant element of the opening of Parliament is the throne speech, but on this occasion, for the very first time and going forward, that will now be known as the President's speech, as Barbados is now a republic, and this will be the first for the new president in her capacity as the island's head of state. As you're seeing on camera, guests are still arriving. And when it comes to ceremonies like these, where military personnel are involved, everything moves with precision and to time. Guests started arriving just after 8.30 with several members of the diplomatic corps, the judiciary and senior government officials already on the inside. In fact, guests were asked to be in their seats in the Senate chamber, which on this occasion is the hibiscus room by 9. Her Excellency, Dame Sandra Mason, who will be attended by her aide de camp, Lieutenant Cena Price. They're expected to leave State House by car at 9.45 and reach here at about 10 minutes to 10. That is Senator Monique Tate, Independent Senator who just made her way in. and the Guard of Honor is in position awaiting the arrival of Her Excellency.
and, and here. And thank you for the confidence um, disposing me to be your president. I certainly will um, work to uphold the honor and dignity and proud traditions of this honorable chamber. I look forward to a uh, robust discussion, exchange of views on the important matters which, are, which will come before us uh, from time to time. Uh, but outside of that, I also look forward to the warm camaraderie, mutual respect, mm -hmm. and um, um, fraternal happiness that should exist among us when we are not on the floor. So once again, thank you very much, um, colleagues, for your support. And we will look forward to a wonderful session together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I now beg to read that the session is provided will be suspended. by Section 61 of the Constitution that each session of Parliament shall be held at such place and commenced at such time as the President may appoint. And whereas it is expedient that a session of Parliament shall be held at the Lloyd Erskine Sandoval Centre. To my hill St. Michael, commencing on the fourth day of February, 2022. Now, therefore, by virtue and exercise of the power and authority vested in me, I, the most honorable Dame Sand. Center Shanika Charmaine Samantha Roberts Olu. Center Andrele Akeem O'Neill Boyce. Center the Honorable Linda Nurse. Center Sir Mr. Christopher Austin Menard. Center Liz Body Phillips. Center Kevin Tukey. Senator Kevin Boyd. Senator Reverend Dr. John Rogers. Senator Andrew William Madeline of Assembly. I am to request that you inform the members of the House of Assembly accordingly. Yours faithfully, Ms. S. Watkins, Private Secretary to the President. Understanding Order Number 2 at the beginning of each session and before the House proceeds to the dispatch of any other business, the Clerk, when so decided by Her Excellency the President, shall inform the House of Her Excellency's desire of the House to select a Speaker. Under Paragraph 3 of the Standing Orders, a member having first ascertained that the member proposed is willing to serve if elected may, arising in his place and addressing himself to the clerk, propose that the honourable member do take the chair as Speaker. If seconded and no other member is proposed for the office, the member so proposed shall be called by the House to the chair without question being put. Are there any nominations for the office of Speaker? All those in favour say aye. All those against it. We're now seeing the arrival of Her Excellency, the Most Honorable Dean, Sandra Mason, the President of Barbados. At her side, the Chief of Staff of the Barbados Defense Force, Commodore Arrington Sherman, and the Commissioner of Police.
Guard Commander will approach Her Excellency and invite her to inspect the guard. Good morning, Your Excellency. I have Captain Ashton Gallo. And I have honor and privilege to the Guard Commander for this morning's state opening of the Parliament. Guard Honor comprises four officers, two foreign officers, and 30 of the ranks drawn from the Barbados Regiment. The, Her Excellency inspects the Guard of Honor, the Chief of Staff, the Commissioner of Police, and her aide de camp, Lieutenant Sina Price, will proceed up the steps to the main entrance of the Lloyd Erskine Sanford Center and will be received by the President of the Senate, His Honor Reginald Farley, and the Sergeant at Arms, Mr. Adrian Lamont. Her Excellency being escorted into the Senate chambers. A 
Upon her entry, everyone will stand and remain standing until she has taken her place. President of Barbados. Let us pray. Guide us, Lord, in all our doings to your gracious favor. And further to your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name and by your mercy attain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our governor, Bless the president of our country, that she may be a light of peace among the people and a blessing to other nations of the earth. For the prime minister and members of the cabinet and to all in administrative authority, grant wisdom and grace in the exercise of their duties. For the members of the Senate and the House of Assembly and those who make our laws, give courage, wisdom, and foresight to provide for the needs of all our people and to fulfill our obligations in the community of nations. For the judges and officers of our courts, give understanding and integrity that human rights may be safeguarded and justice served. For the people and the country, teach our people to rely on your strength and to accept their responsibilities to their fellow citizens that they may elect trustworthy leaders and make wise decisions for the well-being of our society, that we may serve you faithfully in our generation and honor your holy name. For yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and that all that we may defend from the fear of our enemies may pass our time through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Together, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be among us now and forever. Amen.
please be seated. Sergeant at Arms, will you summon the members of the House of Assembly? Up there. Sergeant at Arms. What do you want? One notice to deliver. Come here, enter. Mr. President elect, Her Excellency commands this honorable house in the Senate chamber. In the <laughs> Senate. Mr. Speaker, you let that's it. followed by the Clerk of Parliament and the Chaplain to the House. On arrival of the party from the House of Assembly at the entrance to the Senate chamber, all persons, with the exception of the President, will stand.
important to the members of the House of Assembly will take their places in the Senate chamber. Upon doing so, all persons in the chamber, except the Clerk of Parliament, the aide-de-camp, the Marshal of the House, the Sergeant-at-Arms, the Chief of Staff, and the Commissioner of Police will sit. The members of the House of Assembly have chosen me to be their speaker. I now present myself for your Excellency's approval. I approve your election as speaker. Your Excellency, in the name and on behalf of the members of the House of Assembly, I lay claim to their ancient and undoubted rights and privileges, and especially to freedom from arrest and molestation of their person, freedom of speech and debate, and free access to your excellency whenever occasion may require, and that most favorable construction will be placed upon all proceedings. I give and grant so far as is consistent with the prerogatives and the laws and constitution of this island, every privilege and liberty which has been enjoyed by you as fully and freely as heretofore. Mr. President and members of the Senate, Mr. Speaker and members of the House of Assembly, especially invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. These Houses of Parliament sit today, joining with the people of our new republic in celebration of our democracy, to reaffirm our common bonds as a people of this nation, to build enhanced trust between the governed and those who lead, and to construct a stronger nation state in which all our people have their fair share. 55 years after it was initiated, we can make boast that our sovereignty as an independent nation is now truly our own. We are here assembled for the start of the first parliamentary term since our transition to Republican status. We acknowledge our history, accomplishments, traditions, and values, and we look to the future with keen anticipation. In so doing, we are reminded of the words of renowned Barbadian writer, George Lamin, who said, the architecture of our future is not only unfinished, the scaffolding has hardly gone up. We, the people of this parliamentary republic, must now commit ourselves to the higher calling of building the architecture of our future and to owning our future. Against this backdrop, my government presents to the country the new policy initiatives which will build upon and continue the policy and legislative agenda of the last parliament. My government will anchor its approach to this new term on five core values. Value one, people-centered. Leadership, which is visionary and decisive, 
compassionate and caring, keeps Barbados and Barbadians safe, and helps to secure an equitable and fair future for all. Value two, government must deliver for all. By becoming a model of ethical leadership, which inspires confidence and builds public trust by delivering on its promises, creating a people-centered culture, being fair, transparent, inclusive, efficient, and by insensitizing the public and private sectors and individual citizens to perform and to embrace excellence. Further, as the country's largest employer and service provider, the government must deliver to all its stakeholders, including employees, customers, and suppliers. Value three, pride and industry through active citizenship, in which our people are equally conscious and protective of their rights as well as their responsibility is. My government will seek to create a more giving, participatory, and engaged society for Barbadians at home and in the diaspora, a society in which the views of our people are heard and acted on, and we work in unity in the case of our republic, our human, social, economic, environmental, and relational capital. Value four, Bajan ownership matters. Whether it is the ownership of voice and agency, which increases citizens' participation in governance, ownership of property, which will create the largest property-owning democracy in our region, or the ownership of capital and wealth to guarantee new levels of economic enfranchisement and prosperity for all citizens. Value five, innovation drives opportunity which is potentially transformative of the financial circumstances of individuals, improves quality of life, solves social and environmental challenges, and accelerates economic growth and national development. These core values will undergird the new policy frameworks which my government intends to put in place, supported by drivers of national transformation of Barbados quality of life, ownership and financial security, benefits from renewable energy, home ownership, community and family life, national identity and active citizenship, education and skills, governance and government operations, jobs and decent work opportunities in new sectors, health and well-being, infrastructure and public spaces, resilience and safety. Through these drivers of national transformation, my government is determined to create a new prosperity for all citizens and improve governance and enhance polity and a more engaged citizenry. Building the architecture of our future, transformational governance. This new term begins with a smaller cabinet an enhanced system of committees of parliament aimed at effecting wider national discussion and greater consultation with citizens on proposed legislation and bills. There will now be three standing committees. The committees will be provided with adequate staff and resources and will address matters relating to governance, economic issues, social and environmental matters. While the introduction of new standing committees will enhance the way in which our parliament functions, Barbados's recent transition to parliamentary public status makes this an appropriate juncture to establish a committee, a commission on the reform of parliament to be led by the former president of the Senate, Sir Richard Cheltenham. My government recognizes that good governance is pivotal to maintaining public trust and confidence and convincing members of the public that the political process and public institutions work in their best interests. My government therefore intends to reorient the focus of its operations to be more citizen-centric in order to make people's lives better 
make processes easier and more efficient, and to make policy impactful and valuable for all Barbadians. The people of Barbados can expect from my government stronger focus on clear communication, timeliness of governmental decisions with the continued reforms, and digitization transformation currently in train, accuracy and timeliness of official reports, and enforcement of applicable laws and regulations, all with the ultimate purpose of maximizing value for the entire society through a fair, just, and efficient allocation of state resources, guaranteeing availability and access for those with the greatest needs. This thrust will encompass an all-of-government approach, including central government, statutory boards, regulatory agencies, state-owned enterprises, PPPs, and other enterprises in which government has an interest. This infrastructure will also promote enterprise and competitiveness and assist in the enhancement of productivity, growth, and investor confidence. Building on the enactment of legislation to protect whistleblowers and stop corruption, as well as an act to ensure fairness, honesty, and transparency in public procurement and public finances, my government will bring back to Parliament the Integrity in Public Life Bill, introduce a Freedom of Information Act for increased transparency in governments, implement the recommendation of the Thorn Commission on Local Governance to give the, the public more say in national affairs and implement measures to improve ethics and management systems in central government and state-owned enterprises. In the area of citizen security and the justice system, my government has zero tolerance for guns, crime, and violence, and will seek to reform the criminal justice system while simultaneously combating crime at the community level, specifically targeting interpersonal violence, promoting strong community bonds, offering classes in conflict resolution, and negotiating skills and making early interventions with wayward youth a more sensitive justice system intended to rehabilitate the offenders for useful lives is in the process of being developed. Similarly, community-based approaches for domestic violence will be pursued, including training, counseling, and support to help offenders change and support victims. My government recommits to a system of restorative justice undertaking justice reforms, reforming court processes to include computerized management systems, rationalizing the structure of the Supreme Court and the establishment of a specialized family court to deal with matters relating to children and relationships between couples. The family court will join together for the first time all areas and entities affecting the practice of family law. There will be an emphasis on juvenile justice legislation, child care, welfare, probation, domestic violence, and reform to the payment of maintenance. These initiatives are designed to take away much of the toxicity arising from the breakdown of relationships. There will be a greater utilization of mediation designed to salvage and maintain relationships wherever possible. My government fervently believes that deepening our democracy can only be redound to our individual, individual and collective benefit. Participation in government is not for a select few. It is for all. A distinctive feature of this parliamentary term will be the use of mechanisms to answer the call of many citizens and residents to have a greater say in their everyday lives and the processes of national governance. These mechanisms are intended to amplify the citizens' voice in national affairs beyond the ballot box to people's assemblies where they can more directly influence the running of their communities. At every level, my government is prepared to be held accountable. 
Our citizens will be encouraged to be more philanthropic, to give back to Barbados, to be active agents in national development, and to build a robust third sector, our volunteer and giving sector, which fosters international investment in social causes and national advancement, together with volunteerism by nationals willingly giving their time, skill, resources, or networks for the good and further development of our country. Transformational social policy, a new approach to social services. My government will tackle the complex systemic and challenges faced by citizens who are attempting to cope with multiple challenges. My government will reform the welfare system and establish a family services authority aimed at bringing all public social services under one directorate. Legislation will also be enacted to allow paternity leave for fathers who want to be part of the critical first months of their children's lives. Protection of workers. Having introduced a national minimum wage, my government will bring to the parliament in the early days of the new term a trade union recognition and a collective bargaining bill. A policy will be developed on remote work and the impact of technology on the job security of the Barbadian worker will be studied, including a comparative analysis of models relating to work-life balance to find mechanisms for relieving worker stress. New protective policies will be put in place guaranteeing a new deal for domestic workers, workers in the tourism and hospitality sector, and workers in the agricultural sector. Educating for the future Barbados. Educational policy and opportunities will continue to be a main plank of national development. A new Education Act will replace the Education Act of 1983. The new legislation will be more suited to modern policy, teaching, and management in today's educational system. Tra training in STEAM, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, will be accelerated. The 11 plus examination will be abolished in favor of a system of middle schools and the establishment of schools of excellence in the arts, science, sciences, com commerce, ICT, technical skills, and areas pivotal to national development. Education will be more focused on problem solving, critical thinking, and lifelong learning. There will be continuous effort to train teachers and civil servants to upskill the national population, to train artisans and a new core of male and female construction workers to fill the jobs in the coming building boom of which I will speak shortly. Every Barbadian child and young person will be supported in self-actualization through education and training to achieve their aspirations within the scope of their abilities and God-given talents. Government's goal is to encourage confident creatives, thinkers, change agents, and thought leaders, not to write off our children and our young people. Housing a nation. Across the Caribbean, housing is one of the most unmet demands of regional populations. My government proposes to undertake the most ambitious housing program ever seen in this country in order to house our citizens, finally bringing to an end the perpetually long waiting list at the National Housing Corporation, ensure Barbadians ownership of a piece of the rock, and to construct the largest property-owning democracy in the region of Latin America and the Caribbean. Acting on its own initiative, and in partnership and joint venture programs with the private sector, the government will build 10,000 houses during this term and place photovoltaic panels on the roofs of 50,000 low-income houses, ultimately ending electricity bills and turning these houses into revenue generators for their owners. To promote home ownership amongst our youth, 
housing grants of $3,000 will be given to first-time homeowners under 35 years of age to be used in the transaction. Using planning obligations from major developments, my government will develop an affordable housing program to reduce density in public housing estates. In addition, my government will continue programs to upgrade the electrical and plumbing infrastructure of those units. Moreover, land tax will no longer be charged on properties with improved values up to $400,000 in any location in Barbados. As a first step, the removal of property taxes on values up to $300,000 will be implemented in the first year. With respect to properties with improved values over that sum, land taxes will not be charged on the first $400,000 of property value only on the balance. Economic policy. A smart Barbados. Leveraging the technology, my government intends to transform Barbados and its citizens into a smart nation and a full-fledged innovative economy through the maximization of world-class technologies. Wi-Fi and broadband will be made available to all citizens, especially those in housing estates and rural areas. My government believes that consistent with full self-governance and our Republican status, there must be the building of new wealth, ownership opportunities, and economic prosperity shared by all citizens. Digital Barbados. This will be accomplished by the creation of My Economy, which will offer a digital account to every Barbadian, offering web web publishing and e-payment system to enable our nationals to share or sell digital content to the world. In this way, we will expand the local economy beyond our physical borders, eliminate the constraints of a small market and limited population size, and open new opportunities for fintech, cryptocurrencies, and blockchain. The further expansion of the digitization of government services and access to information will enable greater speed, efficiency, and ease of doing business for Barbadians and international investors. My government will also establish special economic zones for life sciences and fintech. Barbados Wealth Fund. Wealth for Barbadians will be generated through the development of the Barbados Wealth Fund, which will give equity stakes to nationals in government held revenue generating assets. My government will also divest its interests in Sam Lord's Hotel to create to credit unions and similar institutions for the benefit of their memberships. Energy transport and infrastructure. My government will ensure that renewable energy improves the quality of citizens' lives, benefits the environment, and generates incomes for nationals. To this end, my government will establish a green energy park at Vaucluse. In addition, government will work with the Green Climate Fund and investors to establish a green investment bank to in initially finance $150 million dollars of investments that support economic sustainability, including hurricane safe roofs, rainwater harvesting, small renewable energy product, projects, and green bonds. The national transport and energy sectors will be transitioned to green sectors. The fleet of the transport board has already benefited from 49 new electric buses with air conditioning, charging ports, and Wi-Fi. My government has augmented the national transport system with private sector vehicles to improve frequency of service on certain routes where there were insufficient buses in operation. As its next step in the development of an effective transport service, my government will establish the Barbados Mass Transit Authority. Given the vulnerability of our island home to the impacts of the climate crisis, 
and having regard to the serious consequences of Category 1, Hurricane Elsa, which caused loss of property and substantial expenditure, resilient infrastructure is imperative and will be built throughout the island. The beneficiary sectors will include the housing, construction, water, energy, agriculture, and transport sectors. Further, the program will make low and mid middle income homes more resilient to extreme weather events and the consequential loss of electric power and potable water. Additionally, it will make road infrastructure climate resilient, restore the reduced coral reef ecosystem, particularly on the west and south coast of the island. Special economic zones. To give further boost to the economy, my government will introduce legislation to set up special economic zones to attract new investment to the island. Food and nutritional security. My government's agricultural focus will be centered around technology-driven production for food and nutrition security, making the lives of farmers easier and attracting young people to agriculture as a viable career option. We will work with the private sector and labor to facilitate the new ownership and operation of sugar factories. This will be premised on our factories generating renewable energy year round. Given the chronic shortage of water, we will continue to augment affordable access to water for farmers island wide. My government will also undertake a national regeneration policy for our soils to boost agricultural production. My government will work actively to increase the capacity of small farmers to benefit from its land lease programs across the island and will see 200 Barbadians benefiting from the Lear's land lease project and scores of others from the rehabilitation of the Bath Estate. High value ma manufacturing. Manufacturing will be boosted in wines and spirits to position Barbadian food innovations for the global markets, for industrial design, and the establishment of high tech open equipment manufacturer facilities for the creation of medical equipment, clothing and apparel, furniture and home accessories. Small business. My government will lease operating space to small business persons, such as mechanics and auto body repair technicians, and support micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. My government will also attract new low-cost providers of money transfers, payments, and electronic wallets to offer new financial services to Barbadians. In addition, my government will create a new deal with public infrastructure workers by transferring ownership of all its construction and maintenance equipment to UCAL for lease back on an as needed basis. Future commerce. My government will establish future commerce by building a network of the world's most innovative and forward looking companies development institutions, and 500 local companies, including MSMEs, to access innovation opportunities, identify and access the best disruptive technologies around the globe, and create new Bajan businesses in key global centers. My government will also identify outstanding champions of existing and emerging industries from around the world and pair them with local industry leaders or emerging leaders under the umbrella of global advisory councils. We will ensure that we harness the blessed global and local ideas to transform and grow every sector and position Barbados to be on the cutting edge of every industry through these global engagements. My government will zealously protect the reputation of Barbados its international financial services sector and the foreign exchange earnings therefrom. Tourism. Bajan ownership of the tourism sector matter matters. Despite the losses occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic, 
the Barbados brand remains very strong as is demonstrated by a high level of winter bookings. My government will further diversify our economy to ensure that a greater share of pockets of ordinary Barbadians. All Bajans must be owners in the tourism sector. To achieve this, new community tourism villages will be established across Barbados. The villages will be focused on creating locally owned tourism spaces within communities. It is intended that these spaces will create substantial revenues for ordinary Barbadians, increase small business and entrepreneurship, thereby moving some of the tourism earnings from the traditional players to ordinary Barbadians. The co community tourism villages, which will also utilize the gullies around the island for green tourism, will provide tourists with more authentic, enjoyable, immersive local experiences which they so often seek. The government will establish an aviation strategy and civil aviation authority of Barbados to elevate Barbados as an international transport aviation hub for the Southern Caribbean, to attract new carriers and new businesses which generate jobs. My government expects opportunities for Bajans in areas such as aircraft maintenance, operations and flight training. Barbados will also open new source markets with airlift and marketing in Kenya and Ghana in Africa and Qatar and Saudi Arabia in the Middle East. Construction boom. My government expects a building boom in Barbados from the start of multiple public and private sector projects with planning approvals. Projects for public sector expenditure include sewering solutions for the Bell, Bellevue, Bailey's Alley, and Chapman Lane, the Spitestown and Constitution River flood mitigation, placing solar panels on the roofs of all government buildings, national road rehabilitation, and training programs for nationals. My government's expenditure on these programs will amount to $122.5 million. Private sector projects are even more extensive and amount to an expenditure of $1.4 billion. Such projects include Inter Alia Indigo Hotel, the Hyatt Ziva Hotel, Sam Lord's Castle, Sajikor Estates, Discovery Bay Royalton, Margaritaville, Marriott refresh, Refurbishment, Apes Hill Expansion, Sandals Expansion, Crane Expansion, Townhouses at Porters, and a Cineplex and Commercial Center at Welch's St. Thomas. Cumulatively, these projects will generate 5,050 construction jobs of various types and approximately 3,600 full-time jobs. In order to ensure Barbadians get these jobs, my government will embark on its construction gateway program. This will include a rapid training program for both male and female construction workers and workers with related skills. The construction training will have a component of attachments to master craftspersons and artisans. Together with the public sector projects, and government's housing program. This term will witness one of the largest construction booms ever in the history of our island. Sustainable development. The protection of the environment is important to our growth and our way of life as island people. Communities have a vested interest in ensuring the environmental quality of their community is of the standard that they want for themselves and their children. Community-based activities will increase the incomes of the residents of the local communities. My government will preserve our green spaces, particularly our gardens, gullies, parks, and beaches. Work on the National Botanical Gardens will continue, and we will also have a new home for geriatric patients at this location. My government will embark on a national project 
to rehabilitate the gullies to ensure they remain natural green spaces for low impact use, the preservation of flora and fauna, and community assets, which generate revenue for residents of surrounding areas. I'm sure that many of you are pleased with the National Household Waste Management Program and the new garbage bins and recycling containers being distributed. The next phase of the program will see the rollout of a national recycling campaign fully utilizing the bins provided to all households across Barbados. The blue economy. We are an ocean state with control of a body of water up to 400 times larger in marine space than the island itself. Our sustainable development is inextricably linked to our ability to not only harness the potential of, but protect and manage these bountiful waters. My government will prioritize research and development of renewable ocean energy, including, but not limited to, wind, conversion of sargassum to a biofuel, potential production of hydrogen, ocean thermal energy conversion, and will consider how to fully address our deep sea oil, gas, and mineral wealth. While these major initiatives are being pursued, my government will continue the plans for expanding our share of the cruise and shipping, developing Barbados as a yachting hub, and restructuring the ship's registry. Culture, heritage, sports, and health straddle the divide between social and economic considerations. I will now present my government's proposals for these sectors. An orange economy. Our heritage and culture are the mirror image of our country's and people's self-definition and self-identity. It is who we are. They are as much a part of the country as its physical landscape and are carried within the bosom and psyche of every citizen. Culture and heritage also have mass appeal and commercial value. My government will therefore significantly enhance the cultural, creative, and heritage economy through Eventful Barbados, a 52-week event calendar, turning Barbados's city and main towns into hubs for entertainment and leisure prioritize the use of indigenous cultural forms such as literature, fa film, gaming, theater, animation, and dance, among others, in the delivery of education at the nursery, primary, and secondary levels. Queen's Park will be transformed into the cultural hub of the island, complete with performance and rehearsal spaces, studios, retail shops, public art and artists in residence studios, the administrative offices of the NCF will also be relocated to this site. Emphasis will be placed on reclaiming our Atlantic destiny as the children of the African diaspora by fully developing as a cultural and heritage district the African slaves burial ground at Newton Christ Church with the relocation of the archives an appropriate interactive museum and related cultural facilities. Further, my government will complete transformative projects such as the establishment of a state-of-the-art soundstage and production campus and the Heritage District at Newton. These projects will be leveraged to enhance Barbados's digital, digital content production. The Barbados landship will be revitalized through the establishment of landship docks in schools and communities. The annual crop over and the season of emancipation will be modernized and scaled up. These new initiatives will generate income for nationals from food vendors to creatives, from truck delivery drivers to nail technicians, to those who rent party supplies of various types. Sports. My government will develop a full-fledged sports local economy through investment and modern development of high-quality youth and community championships, merchandising, and media products. 
the establishment of a secondary school of excellence for sports careers, and the overhauling of the National Sports Council to be the driver of youth and community sports and well-being. In addition, my government will develop 15 mini stadia across the island and will continue the work of regrading and lighting playing fields and the installation of bleachers and the maintenance of community grounds to allow for increased sporting activity at the community level. The government will also complete the work already started and establish a regional horse racing academy to provide an opportunity for young people to gain critical skills which will afford them the opportunity to secure many of the various jobs in the horse racing sector. My government will also prioritize the further development of Wildi as a multidisciplinary sporting center in Barbados, build a cricket academy utilizing the wealth of local expertise, and provide $1 million Barbados from the Arts and Sports Fund as an initial seed investment in the execution of the implementation plan. We will also develop road tennis as an international sport, aid in the global establishment of a World Road Tennis Federation, which will provide an opportunity for athletes in this sporting discipline to earn income, utilizing Barbados's overseas missions to support and build out road tennis internationally. Health, introduction of a core of community nurses. A system of community nursing will be established to promote greater self-care, reduce the high incidence of chronic non-communicable diseases, enable preventative interventions, and promote early diagnosis of illnesses such as cancer. In support of our elderly population, a new geriatric hospital will be constructed and the care of the elderly program with private nursing homes will be expanded. Government will also encourage organizations such as credit and trade unions to build their care and residential facilities for the elderly. Legislation will also be enacted to protect seniors from physical, emotional, and financial abuse. Other preventive interventions. The chronic non-communicable non diseases are the largest cause of death and disability in Barbados and the Caribbean. My government will introduce interventions in primary health care aimed at reducing the incidence of the NCDs, identifying them in the household setting so as to allow for better outcomes. We will establish a national task force on wellness to advise the government. Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Having built a new accident and emergency department, the upgrading of the plant and services at the QEH will continue. My government will act in the support of the board for the master planning of QEH infrastructure. This will include the relocation of outpatients and administrative services from Martindales Road to other locations to allow maximum use of the building for patient services, building a new laboratory and a much needed car park. Digital transformation will evolve QEH to a smart hospital with automated inventory, electronic medical records, and providing seamless access to information between the hospital and its multiple locations. We are committed to improving the patient experience. Regional and international relations. The building of strategic relationships with like-minded persons, organizations, and countries can add value to Barbados's foreign policy and national life, in addition to creating strong support at the times and in the global fora and places where support is needed. Development in our new republic must be sustainable and built on strong relationships. My government will actively pursue relationship building based on common values, protection of the national interests, commercial and trade diplomacy, and global advocacy by strengthening Barbados's relationship with traditional friends and partners 
particularly those in the United States, United Kingdom, and the European Union, deepening our fraternal relationship with CARICOM, forging new bridges with our Latin American neighbors, and reaching out to Asia on, common on gongs of common interest, and seeking and nurturing new bronze with Africa and further advancing Barbados' position as an advocate for small island developing states. My government will strengthen and leverage the Bajan diaspora, its contacts, skill sets, relationships, and love of Barbados to attract investment, as well as repatriate resources and support in the building out of Barbados' human, social, economic, environmental, and relational capital. We shall also establish a global diplomacy accelerator program which identifies and matches emerging and established talent at all stages of professional development. Mr. Speaker, Mr. President, Barbados must prepare for our post-COVID future, craft new and relevant strategies for development and wealth creation, protect our environment, and build resilience so that no matter the nature of the challenges confronting us, we shall ensure a fair share for all of our citizens. That is why my government, through these strategies, is committed to achieving. This is a historic moment. We must celebrate ourselves and look to the future with a sense of hope. At the beginning of today's address, conscious of our new status, I rooted my remarks in a Barbadian author, George Lamming, and it is only fitting that I close in the same vein. Barbadian poet Kamau Brathwit, in his work, Nine Me Songs for the New Millennium, pens the words which stand as a guide for our nation and the people. I quote him now. Be great cultivators, both of soil and soul, because it's only in that way will there be a tomorrow's harvest. If you live on an island, love it, love it, love it. But remember, no man is an island, and that no island belong to one man. Be always part of something larger than yourself, something that will make you larger than yourself. Part of the island, part of the region, part of the main. Educate yourself, your children, and your community into these things in the way they should go, in the way we should grow. So think on these things, dream on these things, act on these dreams. My government charges the people of this nation, whether at home or abroad, and all who consider themselves friends of Barbados, to let us dream together. Let us build the republic of which our forefathers could only dream, and to which our children can now aspire and realize. May Almighty God, our Creator, bless Barbados and all her people. Thank you.
Aztán She is escorted by the Chief of Staff of the Barbados Defence Force and the Commissioner of Police, where she will take the farewell salute.
One more member, Mr. Speaker, um, the Honorable Member for St. George North. Can I have a seconder, please? <laughs> Appointment of Committee of Privileges. Honorable Leader of Government Business. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that the following persons be appointed to the Committee of Privileges. Your Honor, the Speaker. The Honorable Member for St. Andrew. The Honorable Member for St. Michael South, South South. The Honorable Member for St. Michael North West. The Honorable Member for St. Thomas and the Honorable Member for Christchurch East. Make a second. Appointment of Committee of Public Accounts. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that the following persons be appointed to the Committee of Public Accounts. Um, the Honorable Member for St. James North, the Honorable Member for St. Michael South, the Honorable Member for St. Peter, the Honorable Member for the City, the 
Honorable Member for Christchurch South and the Honorable Member for St. James Central. Beg the second. The Honorable Members are so appointed. Appointment of Standing Orders Committee. Honorable Leader of Government Business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move that the following members be appointed to the Standing Orders Committee. Um, the Honorable Member for St. Michael North, the Honorable Member for St. Philip North, the Member for St. Philip West, the Honorable Member for St. Michael South Central, and the Honorable Member for St. George South. The Honourable Member for St. Philip South. That's it. Wait a second. Your Honourable Members are so appointed. Appointment of Members of the Library Committee. Business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move that the following members be appointed to the Library Committee. The Honorable Member for St. John, the Honorable Member for St. Michael South Central, the Honorable Member for Christchurch West, the Honorable Member for St. Michael East, the Honorable Member for Christchurch East Central, the Honorable Member for Christchurch West Central, and you, your Honorable, the Honorable Chairman. Speaker, as Chair. Back to second. The Honorable Members are so appointed. Business understanding under 10, Government Notices. I'm ready to govern business. Mr. Speaker, I beg to give notice of the Constitution Amendment Bill 2022. First reading of bills. Honorable Leader of Government Business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move the first reading of the Constitu Constitution Amendment Bill 2020. Beg a second. Questions that the aforementioned bill be read the first time. All those honorable members in favor, please say aye. Those against, please say no. Me think the ayes have it. Mr. Speaker, we revert to government notices. I'm the government business. 
Mr. Speaker, I beg to give notice of the final appropriation bill 2019-2020 and the final appropriation bill 2020-2021. I also beg to give notice of a resolution to approve in accordance with Section 5 of the Crown Lands Vesting and Disposal Act, Cap 225, divesting in the National Housing Corporation of the parcel of a land situated at Worthing in the parish of Christchurch in this island. I also beg to give notice of the Barbados Metrology Bill, as well as the Road Traffic Amendment Bill, the Water Reuse Bill, and the Barbados Water Authority Amendment Bill, all 2022. First reading of bills recommitted. Honorably, the government <laughs> business. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Speaker. I beg to move the first reading of the final appropriation bill 2019-2020 and also the final appropriation bill 2020-2021. I also beg to move the first reading of the Barbados Metrology Bill, the Road Traffic Amendment Bill, the Water Reuse Bill, and the Barbados Water Authority Amendment Bill, all 2022. All second. Second the questions that the aforementioned bills be read here first time. All those honorable members in favor, please say aye. aye. Those against, please say no. Me think the yes have it. Are there any other business on the standing orders? No? Adjournment. Honorable Leader of Government Business. Mr. Speaker, with that, we've come to the end of today's sitting. I therefore beg to move the adjournment of the House until Tuesday, the 8th of February at 10 a.m. I beg to second that, sir. The question is that this Honorable Chamber be adjourned until Tuesday, the 8th day of February at 10 a.m. in the forenoon. All those honorable members in favor, please say aye. Those against, please say no. Me think the yes of it. This Honorable Chamber stands adjourned until Tuesday, the 8th day of February at 10 a.m. in the forenoon. Committee of Selection. Just to remain uh, honorable senators, in terms of the committee of um, selection, uh, just to refer to the standing orders here. Um, just locate it. And it is the role of that committee um, to perform the functions of allotting um, members to committees. So the committee of selection um, will, once elected, they will suspend once the committee meets, um, and we will return to take the report of the committee of selection in relation to the other, uh, other committees. Mr. Yes, President, may I nominate Senator Kevin Boyce to sit on the select committee, sir? Thank you very much. Senator Boyce is nominated. Further nominations? Mr. President, I beg to move that on the government side, we nominate Senator Dr. Crystal Haynes, Senator Shanika roberts Odo, and Senator Lorenzo Harewood. Any further nominations? Okay, thank you. Those, um, Mr. President, as ex officio, Senator Boyce, Senator roberts 
Robert Spolo, Senator Haynes, and, and Senator Lorenzo Hayward. There being no further nominations, I declare those senators um, elected by acclamation. The first art of business is, is of course, to go through the other um, committees and to make recommendations concerning, um, concerning those committees, which, as you will see from your order paper, would include our own Senate committees as well as the St. John Committee, so Standing Orders Committee, yes. um, House Committee, Committee of Privileges, Regulations Committee, the um, Library Committee, which is the Joint Select Committee, and the Committee of Public Accounts. We therefore, how, how long are there any more suspensions? But okay. Yes, um, Mr. Clerk? Item number nine, report of such business election. Mm -hmm. Is there any business on this? Yes. Sir, in order 10, this is a grimace of matters of definite urgent public importance. Uh, before you get a standing order, um, item number 10, just for information, the um, committee selection will meet, will meet immediately after we um, adjourn today, and the report of the committee will be taken at our next meeting, um, which would, which would, at which time that, that would, the committee selection will report to us and the, the persons nominated for the remaining committees, and that will be right into the record at that time. So that's why now item number nine, will be deferred in terms of the report, that the committee will meet immediately after the adjourn. Yes, item number 10. We have no motion. We have to have a business on this standing order 10. Any other business? Consider business that's being brought before us under the standing order. There being none, we've come to that happy moment of adjournment. Let me, um, let me take this opportunity to um, welcome, well, technically all senators are, are, are new senators. This is this new session uh, and, and, and so on. Um, this is the first sitting of this new session. Let me welcome back those with whom I had the pleasure and honor of serving the last session. And let me welcome those um, persons who are um, joining us for the first time. And as I said at the beginning, I look forward to um, robust, robust debate, interesting, um, sometimes divergent perspectives on the matters which are before us. But at the end of the day, we will do so in the wonderful traditions of those who have served in this chamber over the many years. Um, that at the end of the day, the public whom we serve We'll look back over our tenure during this session um, and consider that we have done well by our country. I wish you all well. If I make part, I certainly will uphold the highest traditions of the presiding officers of these chambers to be um, fair, to be impartial, to ensure that the proceedings are conducted with decorum and in accordance with all of the rules and traditions and, and, and customs um, I would urge, especially for our new senators, I know you had your briefing session, a briefing session earlier this week, but um, <coughs> remember that the clerks of parliament are here not just to assist at the, at the meetings, 
but feel free to reach out at any time um, concerning any matters on which you want clarity. And also that the senators who have um, been here before are always willing to, to um, assist. And I would say as well as they close that um, th 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 there's a reason why, uh, as I understand from the grand tradition, where the configuration of the, the physical layout of the Senate um, is different from that of the House of Assembly. Um, the, the House of Assembly is the, 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 the width of the aisle, two, so, two sort of widths apart, so that the competing sides don't lob off on the other sides, the host, all, all House of Commons. <laughs> um, but certainly the, the Senate um, in our place has always been around a wonderful uh, large oval table. I look forward to, to, to that, getting back to the um, to our chambers in Bridgetown. But it really um, allows for uh, a lot more consensus building, a lot more exchange of views. There, there's, a, there's a different tone of tenor in relation to the conduct of matters um, in, in the Senate. And I look forward to the, I look forward to, and I certainly would hope that the physical configuration of the chamber lends to that unity of purpose and that focus on the one goal of doing our best as legislators to improve our society in all of, it, in all of its uh, dimensions. Um, so for my part, I look forward to working with all of you um, on the government side, our independent senators and um, um, those who are appointed otherwise at some, at some, at some point um, and when, when those additional senators are here. Uh, so thank you once again. Oh, Senator Cummings. Mr. President, I beg to move that the Senate do not be adjourned. We are potentially likely to meet during the course of next week, but we will be advised uh, by the Parliament of Barbados when we get your normal emails, but uh, we are going to adjourn sine die, but just putting you on notice that we may be meeting for our first sitting, for our second sitting on Wednesday of next week. The question is, that this, sit this sitting, you know, adjourn the Senate day. Honorable Senators in favor, please say aye. aye. Those against, please say no. Methinks the ayes have it. This sitting stands adjourned. <laughs>